Welcome, people. To... This meeting is being recorded. Okay, got it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just to say, welcome to all our participants. And this is a reminder that after a short break, we are starting our monthly seminar sponsored by History Plus. And um, as I said, and we are really pleased uh, to welcome our speaker. But as I said, I, Dr. Okonogi, but I would let Amelia introduce him. So thank you very much for uh, joining us. Okay. And, uh, you know, our seminars are back to our monthly seminars again. Okay, so we look forward to um, your uh, wonderful contribution. So Amelia, please. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's a, a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Okonoji, our speaker uh, today. Dr. Okonoji is a, a researcher and a radiation oncologist, expert in uh, gynecological oncology, and uh, above all, uh, is uh, such an inspiration uh, to me and uh, to my work. So I would uh, thank uh, him so much uh, for uh, his uh, kindness uh, to be here for uh, our uh, monthly seminar at uh, E3+. Plus. Dr. Okonoji has a great experience in uh, proton beam radiotherapy, in uh, brachytherapy, and uh, in uh, carbon ion radiotherapy. And uh, his research uh, is uh, focused now on uh, the combination of uh, carbon ion radiotherapy and uh, immunotherapy, especially for uh, gynecological uh, tumor. Is uh, currently chief physician at, for the Department of Charge Particle Therapy Research at the QST Hospital of uh, Chiba, where uh, he leads uh, the clinical research group uh, in uh, pelvic uh, tumor. He's uh, also a research fellow in uh, radiation oncology at the Massachusetts General Hospital, a member of the Japanese Society of uh, Gynecological Oncology and uh, of the Forum for uh, Nuclear Cooperation in uh, Asia. So a very precious uh, curriculum and uh, sorry Nori if uh, I have to recap it. He's uh, going uh, to talk about a really interesting uh, topic, the past, present, uh, and the future of uh, carbon ion radiotherapy for cervical cancer, implementation of uh, immunocarbon ion radiotherapy, considering the radiation-induced anti-tumor immune response. So thank you so much, Nori, and uh, the stage is yours. Oh, thank you so much. Such a kind uh, introduction for me. Uh, thank you, so, Dr. Melia. Uh, I'm Noriyuki Okonogi, Radiation Oncology at QC Hospital. Uh, this is my great pleasure uh, to make this presentation. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all people who, who worked at the National Center of Oncological Hadron Therapy, Kunao, in Pavia, for giving me such a great opportunity. And I especially want to thank my friend, Dr. Melia. Then and I thank you for all coming. I now belong to the QSC in Japan and the organization name has changed. So the name NIRS News may be more familiar to you. I originally worked as a clinician and I also did the basic research, including immune response. So, uh, but since last year, I've been doing basic research in MGH in the United States. So the title of my presentation is the past, the present, the future, the carbon dioxide cell for cervical cancer. So I'd like uh, to, do you enjoy my presentation? So just a moment, please. Okay, so let's just start my presentation. Can you see my slide properly? It's okay. Yes, we can. Thank you. Yes. Okay, okay. And the COI to be uh, this globe as shown here. Oh, sure. Now, perhaps a unique aspect of my background, uh, Dr. Maria introduced to me. Uh, I have been involved in both the proton beam therapy and the carbon ion radiotherapy. And I'm also the member of the Forum for Nuclear Cooperation in Asia. Oh, this is uh, one of the organizations uh, led by Japanese government uh, to promote and improve the quality in the radiation therapy in Asian countries. And I was also a member of the pharmaceutical and the medical device agency in Japan, like even the FDA in the uh, United States. Uh, but uh, actually, honestly, I'm sorry to say that I'm not good, very uh, good at English. 
and uh, I love sake and pasta. Uh, mi piace molto l'Italia. Uh, I'm not sure this pronunciation is correct, but uh, I do not speak Italian well. So uh, I will give this lecture in English as carefully as possible. So if you have any question, uh, please email me anytime you want. Then the, my research interests are abroad. Uh, of course, the radiation oncology at the heart of my uh, uh, is the heart of my research. But I'm also uh, interested in the clinical and the basic science. Now, among these, I will discuss a carbon ion radiotherapy uh, for cervical cancer and the immune response uh, and, uh, induced by radiation in this talk. And in this talk, I first overview the cervical cancer uh, generally and the carbon ion radiotherapy for cervical cancer. Next, I will discuss the relationship between the radiation therapy and anti-tumor immunity, especially the how radiation therapy affects the anti-tumor immunity. And then I will talk about the implementation of the immunotherapy and the carbon ion radiotherapy in the remaining time. The first slide, we have very common. Uh, cervical cancer is a very common cancer in women uh, with over uh, 600,000 new cases in 2020. As you know, the majority of the cervical cancer are caused by the human papilloma virus. Oh. Um, the incidence of the cervical cancer is Italy uh, lowest level in the world. Uh, however, in Japan, uh, it is not still low enough. So it's uh, still the social big problem. The radiation therapy, you know, the play a central role in the treatment of uh, cervical cancer. And the brachytherapy is considered essential treatment in the radiation therapy for the cervical cancer. The, you know, the American Brachytherapy Society uh, strongly recommend the definitive radiation for cervical carcinoma must include brachytherapy as a component. Basically, I agree with this idea, but basically. But uh, as a clinician, and I'm also the brachytherapist, however, I must say that some patient uh, cannot be cured by the standard treatment. So this is a problem. You know, the recently, uh, the concept of the 3D image guided brachytherapy uh, has, has been reported. And this treatment procedure, uh, 3D image guided brachytherapy has now uh, recently become a standard therapy in the field of brachytherapy. However, the more recent study uh, have found that the uterus cervix adenocarcinoma or bulky tumor uh, have the poor prognosis even when when we applied brachytherapy. Shown here is a study uh, from Dr. Minkoff uh, in which they show the relationship between the radial tumor uh, volume uh, and the local control just prior to the image-guided brachytherapy as a histological type. As you can see here, adenocarcinoma or uh, bulky size of tumor. Uh, this means a slowly shrinking tumor would show a worse uh, prognosis even if we perform image guided the brachytherapy. So uh, this type of the cancer will be good candidate for the carbon ion radiotherapy. Based on this uh, point uh, here, uh, we have been developed uh, the carbon ion radiotherapy for cervical cancer. Now here is an overview of the carbon ion uh, researches and the development for the cervical cancer in uh, QST and NIRS. The, our institution uh, began the clinical uh, research on the carbon ion radiotherapy in 1994. And for cervical cancer, the research and the development began in uh, uh, 1995. Sorry. Then the, we began by evaluating the safety on the carbon ion radiotherapy. Uh, first, we the followed by study uh, for each histological time, the squamous cell carcinoma and the adenocarcinoma. And then the sensory, I have been involved in the verifying the significance of the, the cisplatin use in this research and the development. The currently, the five weeks of the carbon ion radiotherapy with cisplatin administration is our recommended schedule. 
The, here is a current carbon ion radiotherapy standard care for uh, cervical adenocarcinoma in QSD Japan. The, through uh, our research and the development to date, that we believe that the use of the carbon ion radiotherapy at the dose of the 74.4 gray RBE in 20 fraction uh, over five weeks, and the concurrent use of the cis splurging at the dose of the 40 million per square is safe and effective. In this treatment, we firstly uh, do the 36 gray RB and the 20, uh, 12 fraction of carbon ion radiotherapy to the whole pelvic region. Then the subsequently uh, 19.2 gray RB and the four fraction of carbon ion is administrated the primary site uh, using the newly taken CD. The finally uh, 19.2 gray RB, the fourth fraction of the carbon ion is administrated to the GTB lung. In my opinion, the key is to uh, revise the treatment plan that we uh, take the new CD for each treatment stage. Uh, as the tumor shrinks uh, to adhere to those constraints to the gastrointestinal tract. Then this table uh, is for a comparison for the treatment outcome of the adenocarcinoma uh, of the uterus cervix, uh, consisting more than the 30 patients. The second line from the bottom show the data of the carbon ion radiotherapy alone, and the bottom line show the data for the carbon ion radiotherapy with concurrent use of the cis -plurgin. As you can see in this table, even though the carbon ion data uh, uh, only include the locally advanced stage, uh, this means that this uh, do not include any kind of patient with stage one, but the results were comparable to the beta to the standard therapy. The last year, uh, we published the multi center uh, retrospective analysis of the long term outcome of the carbon ion radiotherapy for uh, uterus adenocarcinoma. The five years of over survival and the local control rates uh, 68% and 65% respectively. Uh, this is a better uh, to the conventional study. So uh, I would say the long term effectiveness of the carbon ion radiotherapy uh, was verified by this study. Interestingly, in this study, the multivariate analysis showed that uh, initial tumor response within six months was significantly associated with the clinical outcome. I guess at uh, this point need to be uh, verified with the prospective multi center data. So uh, we are currently uh, working on that analysis. As a result of this study, the carbon ion radiotherapy for the adenocarcinoma uterus cervix is now uh, covered by the public uh, medical insurance uh, in Japan uh, from the April to so this year. Next, I'd like to discuss the carbon ion radiotherapy for squamous cell carcinoma of the uterus cervix. Uh, in principle, the strategy is uh, basically the same that of the carbon ion for adenocarcinoma, uh, including uh, the use of the three level of the irradiation and the concurrent use of the cis splurging. And still the number of uh, those that boost irradiation uh, in the latter half of the treatment are different. Uh, this difference is the, due to the history of the clinical trial to date. But it is unique that in the last two sessions I performed the nine gray, it's very high, those nine gray RBE per fraction. But because of scama cell carcinoma uh, generally shrinks uh, well uh, during the treatment period compared to the adenocarcinoma. So uh, the strategy is to irradiate the scama cell carcinoma with higher dose after it has shrunk as much as possible. So uh, this idea is the same as the Braki therapy. And uh, this image should uh, uh, represent the treatment plan of the carbon ion radiotherapy for uterus cervical cancer. The yellow arrow uh, means the beam angles. And as you can see in the B image C, the carbon ion can uh, concentrate to the tumor uh, while minimizing the dose uh, to organs at the risk, you know. 
Then this case, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, uh, being difficult to cure with the standard treatment, uh, uh, eventually received the carbon nine radiotherapy. At uh, six months after the treatment, uh, there's the reactive assay that I'm showing here, but the complete response of the tumor has been achieved. The, we also uh, reported that long-term outcome, the carbon ion radiotherapy for locally advanced squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. And the, some of that data is, uh, is on this slide. Uh, the, we found even though the tumor size was larger than six centimeter, the comparable uh, local control rate uh, was achieved. And notably, if we could apply the higher dose, the higher local control rate were, uh, could be achieved. So we recommended to use that the 72 gray uh, before the scum cell yeah. carcinoma now. Then uh, when irradiating cervical cancer with high dose of the carbon nine beam, the fundamental issue is the reproducibility. As you know, the normal the uterus is held in the place uh, by the three different ligaments anatomically, but it still moves within the pelvis. Uh, in the case of the locally advanced cervical cancer, the uterus uh, itself is less mobile because the tumor has invaded the surrounding tissue. The, however, the uterus movement must still be uh, careful. Uh, therefore, the, the vagina, uh, in my institution vagina is uh, filled by some number of cotton part uh, showing here. Uh, and uh, in the same manner, and the bladder is also emptied once and then filled one, uh, how, 100 cc of the normal saline and then the treatment planning CD is taken. The actual treatment for the boost irradiation uh, is performed uh, the, under the exactly same condition. So these uh, steady steps create a distance between the tumor uh, uh, and the rectum and can hold the cervix of the uterus. So uh, it's not the perfect, we know that it allowed that the reduction of the direct of those of the beta reproducibility for the irradiation, the carbon ion radiotherapy. But when considering the risk of the uterine uh, movement, uh, the method of performing a boost irradiation with 3D image guided brachytherapy might be a reasonable treatment method. So uh, we have also reported the safety and the efficacy of the combination of the carbon ion reduced therapy and the 3D image guided brachytherapy for treatment of cervical cancer. In this strategy, the boost irradiation uh, was done by 3D image guided brachytherapy. And uh, this has the advantage of not having to worry about the uncertainty of the uterus movement. Although the biological effect is reduced because of low uh, LED irradiation uh, due to the, the brachytherapy. Now, this treatment method is also uh, covered by the Japanese uh, medical insurance system. And, uh, personally, I believe this the hybrid approach. Hybrid means the combination of the carbon ion and uh, image guided brachytherapy uh, is a safer cases where the tumor is highly invasive uh, to the uterus body. So now. Uh, Actually, the, honestly, there's no conclusion yet that the, whether the carbon ion alone or this hybrid treatment strategy is superior. And this is uh, one of the subjects for the, the future research. Uh, here's a brief summary so far. Uh, we have been interested in uh, investigating the carbon ion radiotherapy as a means of the curing how to treat the cervical cancer. Uh, such as unresectable adenocarcinoma, the suffix and the bulky uh, suffix cancer. The, our research began in 1995 and 2022, the carbon-9 radiotherapy for unresectable adenocarcinoma or the uterine suffix uh, is covered by public, public medical insurance in Japan. The, we continue to develop the novel, novel treatment strategy, such as combining uh, combine 3D image guided brachytherapy oh. and the carbon ion radiotherapy uh, in order to improve the treatment. 
Actually, in the regular lecture, I usually end my talk at this point, but uh, I know the audience gathered today as, a, how can I say, the professional in the carbon nine radiotherapy. So uh, from this point forward, I would like to read further and discuss a future uh, treatment strategy. So let me, sorry. Then the, when we considering the radical cure of the cervical cancer, uh, it is critical to avoid the distant metastasis. Rather, it will be a common problem in all cancers. Uh, this is a paper analyzing the significance of the concurrent cisplatin as a part of long-term analysis of cervical adenocarcinoma uh, by uh, propensity score matching. In carbon 9 radiotherapy of the uterus cervix, the combination of the cisplatin was found to significantly uh, reduce, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the significantly prolong the overall survival and the distant free survival. So now uh, this fact itself encourages to the use of the cisplatin. But I'd like to emphasize here, as indicated at the blue arrow, uh, that the nearly 40% of patients develop the distant metastasis, even with uh, we use the cisplatin. So this is a critical problem. So one reasonable approach generally uh, to control uh, metastasis will be adjuvant chemotherapy. Then, the, you know, the several the large scale the clinical trial have been conducted on the adjuvant therapy after the carbon ion radiotherapy for cervical cancer. The, however, uh, even in the recent trial, the named Outback trial did not show the survival benefit of the use of the adjuvant therapy. Oh. So, that we need a different approach. So what exactly were candidates for the different and the new approaches? Uh, we believe it's about maximizing anti-tumor immune response. Uh, this paper, uh, it's about, it's a report by my colleague, uh, Dr. Miyasaka. And uh, this is a study induced by prognostic analysis of patient who underwent uh, standard therapy, uh, CCRT for adenocarcinoma uh, of the cervix. Interestingly, uh, the patient was the positive infiltrating T lymphocyte, uh, so-called uh, TILS, uh, in the tumor uh, were found to have the beta prognosis. Then the, since I was originally studying anti-tumor immune response to radiation, uh, I decided to seriously uh, consider the combination of the carbon ion radiotherapy and the anti-tumor immune response to cervical cancer. So let's on the next topic. Next, I will now discuss the relationship uh, between the radiation therapy and anti-tumor immunity, especially how radiation therapy affect anti-tumor immunity. So this includes the basic uh, research. Uh, therefore, I hope you understand that what I am about to discuss. It's not limited to cervical cancer first, but it's a topic uh, related to the cancer in general. I would like to share some important news from the past decade uh, related to immuno-oncology. Maybe this is a very uh, well-known topic. Uh, this topic, uh, actually, when I become a doctor, uh, cancer immunology was not so hot topic as its current status. Uh, however, immuno-oncology has become a hot topic in the cancer uh, treatment in recent years. Uh, in 2011, uh, Ralph Steinman uh, received the Nobel Prize. He's a very the famous person in the field of immuno-oncology. He discovered the dendritic cells. Now, in 2013, the new drugs uh, such as anti-PD-1 and uh, anti-CTLA-4 antibody uh, were recognized and the clinical significance uh, known the breakthrough of the year. Uh, the most more recently, uh, Dr. Allison and Dr. Honju uh, received the Nobel Prize in 2018. So the immuno-oncology is a hot topic in the cancer and set to uh, drastically uh, change the treatment of the cancer. Now, have you ever heard the phenomenon called abscopal effect? 
the, since the, the recent uh, emergency of immune checkpoint inhibitor, uh, this phenomenon uh, has been recognized by many researchers uh, involved in cancer care. However, radiation oncologists have been aware of this phenomenon long time. This slide showed the abuscopal effect in the patient was malignant lymphoma. Uh, this patient had a known uh, Hosekin lymphoma and received a 30 gray of the mantle. It's a very traditional way of radiation for this disease. And the reduction in size of pelvic lymph node uh, was found after the radiation. It's a non irradiated region. Notably, this paper was published in 1977. That's about 50 years ago. Now, in 2004, uh, Dr. De Maria uh, reported the immune response regulate the uh, abscopal effect, especially the T lymphocyte regulate the effect. In this study, the breast cancer cell was implanted in both flank of mice and only, use, uh, only uh, one site was irradiated. As shown the red arrow uh, here, now, there was a tumor growth delay on the non-irradiated site in normal mice. On the other hand, when the same experiment was done uh, in the nude mice, uh, which do not have the functioning T cell, there was no delay in tumor growth on non-irradiated site. So in other words, uh, it was uh, demonstrated that the T lymphocyte controlled the abuscopal effect. As you all know, uh, the immune response itself is very complex and diverse. Uh, it had been reported to boost the innate and acquired immunity uh, involved the uh, immune response to cancer. So there's not enough time to uh, talk about all of them. Uh, in this lecture, I will focus on the acquired immunity, especially with the immune response by the T lymphocyte. I'm showing you that the flow of immune response that the T lymphocyte system uh, induced by radiation. The, when, we, when cancer cells are irradiated, the expression of HLA class 1 on the tumor surface of the cancer is first enhanced. Uh, this is a very important point. This HLA expression uh, is essential uh, for T cell to recognize the cancer cells. Then cancer cells are destroyed by radiation and cancer-specific antigen are spread. In other words, the radiation causes immunogenic cell death. Then the dendritic cell, the phagocytos, and the cancer-specific antigen is the stimulated CD8 positive T cell. Then the activated uh, T cell, the so-called cytotoxic lymphocyte, attack the both sides of the cancer cell the, at the primary and the metastatic tumor cell. So in a sense, this process is equivalent to giving the some the vaccination. There's no doubt that the surgery is essential local treatment as well as the radiation therapy. But as shown, the surgery and the radiation therapy are completely different in terms of activation of T cell immune response. Now let me introduce some of our study related to this immune lymphocyte flow. Uh, Dr. Sato, uh, he's my colleague and friend, uh, conducted this study. Now we compare the expression of HLA class 1 in the pre irradiated and the resected specimen in the patient who underwent the pre operative irradiation with surgery for rectal cancer. As I explained earlier, uh, this HLA, HLA expression is essential for T cell to recognize cancer cells. The results show that expression uh, the HL class 1 enhanced by radiation. And in this study, the group of patients with high LAT class 1 uh, showed a better overall survival. Uh, Dr. Yoshimoto conducted this study, and he is also uh, my colleague and friend. Uh, in this study, uh, we use the Lewis lung cell carcinoma. It is very typical uh, cell line for the lung uh, cancer cells. And the 10 days after inoculation, uh, tumor was irradiated at the 30 degree of the local X-ray irradiation. The, we assessed the significance of the anti-CD8 antibody administration in these experiments. 
as shown here, the CD8 cell depletion using anti-CD8 antibody significantly decreased the therapeutic uh, efficacy of radiation. So in other words, the activation of the CD8 cell involved the radiation efficacy. In this study, uh, we also assess the significance of uh, anti-CTLF4 antibody administration. So you know the CTLF4 is a negative regulator of the T cell activation. Then, as you can see here, the use of anti-CTLF4 antibody uh, significantly increased the antitumor activity of radiation therapy. Thus, the efficacy of the radiation could be increased by augmenting uh, the immune response. Next, I would like to introduce a study that showed the importance of the dendritic cell. In the brain, the microglia uh, play a role of as the dendritic cells. Therefore, uh, we investigated the whether the additional administration of the cultured microglia combined with the radiation therapy prolonged the prognosis of the malignant glioma rats. Uh, in this study, uh, we divided into the four groups, uh, control and the radiation therapy around the microglia injection and the combination of the microglia and the radiation therapy. Then we assess the correlation between the number of the microglia and the CD8 positive lymphocyte and the number of CD8 positive lymphocytes and the survival. As a positive correlation was found between the number of microglia and the CD8 positive cells, in addition, the positive correlation was also found between the CD8 positive lymphocyte and survival of period. Thus, the combination of the DC administration and the radiotherapy may be an effective treatment even for the malignant brain tumors. Let me back a moment. I have presented some results of study, but what important is the whether the cytotoxic T lymphocytes are ultimately induced by radiation therapy? So uh, we have also reported on this point. The professor Suzuki conducted this study. Uh, he's a professor of the Department of Radiation Oncology, Fukushima Medical University. Uh, he was my advisor uh, when I was a graduate school of medicine and remained my mentor. Uh, this study enrolled the 16 patients, actually the patient the, who had HLA-2402 or HLA-0201 status with histologically diagnosed esophageal cancer. Uh, we evaluated the antigen-specific T cell response against the six cancer testes antigen in preferred blood lymphocyte from this patient. Uh, this type of research is now become commonplace, but uh, the data was published 10 years ago uh, before the immunocheckpoint inhibitor were widely recognized and under a groundbreaking uh, at the time. As a result of this study, the antigen presenting T cell response was confirmed the sixth patient uh, in uh, 16 patient. So this means that the radiation therapy indeed induced the cytotoxic T lymphocyte in some patient. But however, it is very rare to see the abuscopal effect in the actual clinical setting. Why? I think the two possible reasons are there. Uh, one is anti-tumor immunity induced by radiation itself is very weak. And some other, uh, other reason is some factor interfere uh, with radiation induced uh, immunity, anti-tumor immunity. Uh, in fact, the recent advantage in the tumor immunology are mainly due to the elucidation of the detail uh, mechanism. Sorry for this busy slide, but I had added factors, many factors there, uh, which promote a suppress of T cell or tumor response, the diaphragm, the T cell immune response that I shown earlier. As you can see, the many factors are intricately involved in the immune response of T cell system. So uh, you would see the maximizing the immune response activated radiation is not easy. The besides, uh, it's also found a negative effect of the radiation on anti-tumor immune response. 
Dr. Sato uh, reported the enhancement of the PDL1 expression. It's a negative factor for the uh, anti tumor neurology uh, in the tumor cells and its mechanisms. I will uh, not go into the detail at this time, but the radiation uh, itself enhances the PDA1 expression in the tumor cell via the start pathway and IRS S1. Now, this IRS1 expression is uh, upregulated through the, the jack start pathway. So the eventually uh, PDA1 expression uh, was enhanced by the radiation. But uh, uh, important is the radiation uh, may block the anti tumor immunity induced uh, by the, this PDL1 expression. So, the, here is a brief summary of what we have so far. The radiation therapy triggered the many anti tumor immune responses that are shown here. But at the same time, now, it can also uh, affect the immune escape mechanism, including the PDL1 expression. Thus, the ideal strategy is to enhance the positive anti tumor effect by, uh, while minimizing the negative effect in radiation therapy. Then I will talk about the implementation of immunotherapy and uh, radiation therapy, including carbon 9 refuse therapy in remaining time. The broadly speaking, there are the many different types of immunotherapy. Uh, the NIH website uh, lists immunotherapy as the showing categories. Now, we were given the level of attention in recent years. Perhaps we should focus our discussion of the immuno checkpoint inhibitor. And uh, frankly, uh, keep in mind that uh, we would be considering a joint research project with the, some kind of the pharmaceutical company. Uh, we would need to prioritize the combination of products that the company is currently focusing on. The industry, I have negotiated with many pharmaceutical companies and uh, each time uh, they, the person in charge in the pharmaceutical company insist on the major issue of profitability. Yeah, I can understand well, but uh, which is uh, separate from the uh, science itself. In any case, I'm going to focus uh, my discussion on uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. Then when we discuss the combination of radiation therapy and the immunotherapy, uh, there's indispensable report. Uh, this is uh, the Apostles report. I'm sure you are very familiar with this case report, uh, which have been cited approximately uh, 1,500 times in the, over the past 10 years. Uh, in this report, systemic malignant melanoma uh, progressed despite the using of anti PD, uh, sorry, anti CTL4 antibody. Then the radiation therapy uh, was given only the tumor, uh, vertebral body, uh, as a palliation therapy. The surprisingly, the tumors in irradiated as well as the non irradiated site were reduced. So uh, this means the radiation that revived the effectiveness of the anti ctl 4 antibody. So this report demonstrated the importance of radiation-induced immune response and the positive future in combination of the radiation and immunotherapy. Including the ctl 4 uh, the factor that suppress the immune response, uh, what is attracting attention now is clinical settings. Uh, in recent years, the drug against these molecules uh, have been uh, developed. So as I'm sure you uh, know well, uh, these are immunogenic point inhibitors. So um, as I told you so far, uh, radiation therapy activate anti tumor immune response. Therefore, the combination of the radiation therapy and the immunogenic point inhibitor is a very uh, logical approach. In fact, the combination of immunogenic point inhibitor and radiation therapy has shown the remarkable efficacy in clinical setting. Uh, one such trial uh, is the Pacific trial, uh, which uh, you are familiar with, uh, addition of anti pd l one antibody dilbarban uh, prolonged the survival of the patient with non-small cell lung cancer. 
the result of the this trial have changed the guidelines in many countries for lung cancer treatment. The once uh, PDL1 expression is enhanced by radiation, the tumor cells are less likely to be attacked by uh, CTLs. So, but when we PDL1 is suppressed, the CTL can exert their natural effect. So, a uh, combination of radiation therapy and immunotherapy can be ideal strategy. Sorry. And then I summarized the result of the phase three trial of immunocheckpoint inhibitor in combination with radiation therapy uh, for several diseases uh, have been uh, published. I'll show the previous slide, the combination of the rivalvam and radiation therapy for lung cancer demonstrated the prolonged overall survival and the progression-free survival. And the adjuvant uh, ant PD-1 antibody, uh, nivolumab, uh, after the neoadjuvant CCRT for esophageal cancer patient, also showed a uh, prolonged disease-free survival. Now, meanwhile, it is noteworthy that uh, immunocheckpoint inhibitor and radiation therapy do not always result in the prolonged uh, uh, improved outcome. Uh, as a supplement, for example, the head and neck cancer, uh, phase three trial by other uh, immunocheckpoint inhibitors are currently underway. So uh, we will need to uh, monitor uh, this result closely. But I want to emphasize here that the disease and characteristic for which using ICI in combination is desirable will become more apparent in the future. In fact, the question of the which ICI to combine the carbon-9 radiotherapy for subural cancer was very difficult for me. Uh, in this context, uh, I had decided to use the combination of ANTPD-L1 and uh, carbon-9 radiotherapy in my conclusion because of the data uh, showing this slide. I think I mentioned a uh, little earlier that X radiation can increase the expression of PDL1 in tumor cells. So we also assess the PDL1 expression uh, using the patient tumor sample who actually undergone the carbon ion radiotherapy. But we also are uh, uh, as shown this right, the PDL1 expression after one week after the starting of carbon nine radiotherapy uh, was significantly elevated compared to the that of pre-carbon nine radiotherapy. The result of this study uh, did not make me decide, uh, not only uh, make me decide to combine the carbon nine and anti pd one uh, but it also made me decide to need to use a concurrently uh, carbon ion, uh, concurrently with carbon ion radiotherapy because a bit early time, we found that the PDL1 expression in early phase of the carbon ion radiotherapy. So, negotiation with this actual pharmaceutical company was difficult and time consuming. But uh, recently, uh, we were finally able to start a small phase one study. Then the QST recently studied uh, several clinical trials in combination with immunocheckpoint inhibitor. Uh, due to the confidential matter with pharmaceutical company, I cannot give you any detail this time, so sorry. But I'd be happy to talk about this uh, another time. But I hope the combination of carbon ion radiotherapy and immunocheckpoint inhibitor for cervical cancer maybe. Uh, future standard of care. Well, the, everyone may also uh, be interested in the, whether the frequency, the severe the toxicity of the higher uh, combination uh, of immunocheckpoint inhibitor and the radiation therapy compared to the ICI alone. The paper answering this question has been published in 2020. Uh, this meta-analysis includes 51 study, and this study showed a comparable uh, grade 3 to 4 toxicity in ICI plus radiation therapy and ICI alone. 
The stratification by the timing of the radiation irradiated size showed no significant difference. But uh, anti-CTLA-4 therapy and the melanoma showed increased toxicity. So at this time, there is no evidence that the combination of ICI and the radiation therapy increased the frequency of the severe adverse event when we compare to the ICI alone. However, it should be noted that the idea include a combination uh, of a stereotactic radiation therapy. It's not so the broad field of radiation mainly. And there's uh, inherent bias. This is a normal organs being evaluated, such as melanoma, malignant melanoma and lung cancer. And the follow-up period is still short. In addition, uh, no data for the carbon-9 radiotherapy. So uh, we will need to monitor this radiating study closely. And I'd like to uh, publish the result of our phase one study as soon as possible. Lastly, I'd like to discuss the possibility that the carbon ion radiotherapy is more uh, beneficial than the photon beam therapy stimulating anti tumor immune response. As I explained earlier, uh, radiation therapy uh, induced a so called immunogenic cell death, which released a signal of inflammatory cytokine from the cancer cell. The high morbidity uh, group box 1, HMGB1, is uh, one of the critical signals and the trigger the activation of the acquired immunity uh, by binding the uh, toll like receptor 4 on the dendritic cells. Then the, we compare the HMGB1 release at the detendals of cervical and esophageal cancer uh, using the different LAT body radiation. And then uh, 70 cap of carbon 9 radiation significantly increased the HMGB1 level in the culture supernatant of the old cells, the 72 hour irradiation completed uh, compared with the, the lower LAT. So uh, this study suggests that HMGB1 release from cervical cell line increase with higher LAT. So this result suggests that irradiation with higher LAT may be effective for uh, dendritic cell activation. So in other words, it could be possible advantage in combination with the ICIs. And the Sega sting pathway uh, may be notable another benefit of carbon ion radiotherapy in immune response. The critical for the radiation induced T cell activation is mediated the accumulation of a cytosolic DNA in irradiated cell. Uh, consequently, it activates the Sega sting pathway and the downstream production of interferon 1 and other cytokines. So the carbon ion radiotherapy, you know, the, it's a higher LED radiation, and therefore the efficiently causes the DNA doubles to the break. So the theoretically, the carbon ion radiotherapy is more uh, likely to elicit the immune response in the T cell system than X-ray therapy. The further carbon ion radiotherapy research to uh, prove this concept is warranted. As a summary, uh, the implementation of immunotherapy in carbon ion radiotherapy for cervical cancer, uh, promising result from adding ICI to radiation therapy have been uh, reported. There's no evidence that combination of ICI and radiation therapy increases the frequency of the severe adverse effect uh, when we compare to the ICI alone, but uh, the trend will be needed to monitor the closely. The carbon ion radiotherapy might be superior uh, photon beam therapy, not only its potent the local effect, but also for uh, efficacy, uh, efficiency, and uh, extending anti tumor immune response, HMGB1 activating or uh, and uh, Sega sting pathway. Uh, we started the several clinical trials in combination with ICI and the carbon ion radiotherapy, including cervical cancer. It will uh, probably, that's a mic hope, it will probably uh, become a common place to combine the immune therapy and the radiation therapy or the carbon ion radiotherapy in the near future. Thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really, really interesting and uh, with so many details. And I think that uh, we have a uh, few minutes, some minutes, if anyone has a, some question or any. Yeah, please ask me the very simple question. <laughs> <laughs> simple English. Sure, they would be simple for you. <laughs> I'm sure they would be simple for you, but really thanks again for a very, very interesting and information. I have a question, Nori. Yeah. Ah, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> so are you testing uh, the, the combo or are you thinking to test uh, the combo approach? So immunotherapy and the carbonion also in uh, gynecological melanomas? Because uh, I uh, really know your uh, data that is incredible in terms of uh, local control in uh, using a carbonion radiotherapy for vaginal, cervical, uh, melanomas. But uh, uh, there is a, a lack of, con of control uh, in terms of a progression free survival. So mm -hmm. I think uh, it can be useful uh, to test uh, this approach also in uh, this um, uh, malignancy that uh, are uh, uh, no for uh, their uh, um, immunological uh, background. Yeah, yeah, true. I completely agree with the idea that the use of the immune checkpoint inhibitor is not only to prevent a distant metastasis, but it's also affect the local control. So the, the malignant melanoma is one of very difficult to cure. Even we apply the carbon 9 radiotherapy. So ideally, I'd like to combine the ICI and the carbon 9 radiotherapy even for the melanoma patient. But uh, the clinical problem is that the generation of the patient who develop uh, gynecologic melanoma is elderly people. So uh, this means that even if the use of the ICI itself is to be hesitated by the clinical oncologist due to the, their ages. So uh, in this round, uh, we have to conduct some the small size, or even for the small size of clinical trial to uh, elucidate it, the safety of the combination of them. But uh, the basically, I totally agree with that idea. Thanks, thanks. Maybe a trial together. And, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, another question uh, yeah. uh, about uh, gynecological melanomas. Are you data about the announcement of uh, PDL1 uh, in uh, gynecological melanoma after uh, treatment with carbonyl radiotherapy? Uh, sorry, I don't have any idea because uh, generally speaking, you know, uh, the recommendation mentioned is not uh, do any the surgical the bias the, the taking the sample the after even for the after the melanoma to prevent the distant metastasis. So actually we don't have any idea, but uh, the, we can assess that the, whether the any uh, PD one expression in vivo uh, nurses using the mice model. So I think. We should the first we do that some the people study uh, before the study in the human, including the some the biopsies. In my opinion. Thank you, thank you, Nori. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any any question? Any other question? Or that you can email anytime. Yes, yeah, surely. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your availability. Okay. Okay. So I think, uh, Manjit, we can, uh, let's say, close uh, this, mm -hmm. uh, this seminar. Yep. Thank you very much again. And also being available to be able to answer questions. And we wait for you to come and give us an answer in a few years from your BMJ articles, okay, mm -hmm. to see what's going on. And so I just wanted to also announce that we look forward to all of you in our next seminar in January, which will be given by Walter Tinganelli from GSI on Flash. And of mm. course, we will sell out, send out the announcements. And of course, with Christmas and also our midterm review, we will not have a seminar in December, but we will, the next one will be in January. So thanks a lot, everybody, and have a nice evening. A nice morning to you in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice, uh, have a good one, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me this time. I really appreciate it. All Great of you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank so you. thank you very everybody and uh, look forward to seeing you in January and uh, you know it's too early to wish you a good holidays but we will send you a message at some point thanks a lot everybody bye 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 thank bye -bye. you bye 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 thank you